We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate for you are with us here. We believe that we will see you when you come. In your glory, Lord, we remember, we celebrate, we believe. On this day, we remember, we celebrate, and we believe. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sinfulness, and ask the Lord to be patient with us, and forgive us. Lord Jesus, for the times that we test your patience, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the times that we have not listened with an open heart and open ears, we pray, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to be strengthened by your love, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But through you, you are the master of might. You judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds, that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. 
thanks be to God. Our response, Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O oh Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn towards me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the attention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. O oh Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have all these weeds come from? He answered, the enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he replied. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
There is a, a saying that says, in hindsight, we see 2020. We have perfect vision when we're looking back at a situation. In today's parable, we're invited to look at the weeds and the wheat. And what does the master say? I don't, I don't want you to, to pull out the weeds because you might uproot the wheat. So often times in our lives, when we look back at situations, we, we see it from a different perspective. And so the invitation for us is to ask ourselves, what is truly the weeds in our lives and what is truly the wheat in our lives? And over time, does the definition of those two change based on our experience? I can remember reading a book written by a, a Jesuit priest, and it talked about the premise that we don't really know what is our weeds and our wheat until we get older in life. I can remember reading that and, and being a little reactionary because I thought as a young priest I had all the wisdom already. Now I know different. I don't. I'm still searching and seeking. But I thought the premise was a good one. When we look back at our lives, what, what were those moments that really changed us? Were they things that we would have uprooted early on because it was too painful or it was too challenging or it made us change in our lives? How those changed the, the direction and, and yet then, Years later, we'd say, wow, that was really a great gift. That was the wheat. The other aspect, I think, of the parable is one that we can all learn from. And that is, one of the invitations that the Lord has is for us to trust that God our Father is patient. He says, you know, I'm going to just let all this grow together. The weeds and the wheat. I'm not going to look for an early harvest. I'm not going to look at, at, at making sure everything works out immediately. I'm not going to be reactionary. I'm going to let it all grow until the end. And then I'll get the harvesters to come and, and make the separation and the difference. That's a very patient person who's willing to do that. God our Father is really patient with us. He's willing to allow us to, to find strength and fortitude in, in, in ways to grow. Weeds and wheat, what are they in our lives? And more importantly, how can we treasure this incredible, patient God who waits for us to grow, who's willing to, to give us time and more time and, and more time to grow? It isn't until the end of the time, until the end of the season, that the harvesters will come in and separate the weeds from the wheat. Good news for us is that we have a patient and loving God that's willing to, to give us time. Give us time to reconcile. Give us time to experience forgiveness. Give us time to believe. What is our weeds? And what is our wheat? Wisdom tells us that it may take us time to figure that all out. But the Lord invites us to grow and gives us a patient and loving experience that we can all grow into. As a holy people, we now proclaim our common belief. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people invited to grow in our faith, that we may be participants of the kingdom, we offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. We pray in a special way for the church throughout the world. We pray that it may continue to grow in wisdom and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for our nation and our world gripped with violence, gripped with turbulence. We pray that a calm and a peace may flow from the Lord who is patient with us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for some of the intentions that have been sent in. We pray for all young people, especially in their teens, that are suffering emotional problems. We pray for the people who enable them. We also pray for those who share with them tough love, like parents and doctors and therapists. For them that they may seek wisdom and understanding, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for continued prayers for all the candidates, finishing strong as they are preparing to serve our nation in the armed forces, for all of them who are going through boot camp experiences, that they may come home safe and healthy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are in need of healing, especially serious illness. We pray that there may be an experience of strong awareness of God's presence that has never abandoned them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for the prayers that you brought with you in the silence of your hearts. We pray that we may continue to grow in faith. Loving God, strengthen us on this journey, that we may know your wisdom and love, that we may be patient with ourselves as you are patient with us. We ask this through Christ our Lord, Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through in your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faith-filled servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty 
may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For his death we now celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with a living faith, and his coming in glory we await with an unwavering hope. And so with angels and archangels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offer them covenants, and through the prophets you taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared in our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life that we might live, no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O oh Lord, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left to us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave you thanks. Handing the chalice to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death, 
his descent to the realm of the dead, we proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon this sacrifice, which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, with Richard, our apostolic administrator, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and with all the saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Jesus Christ, your Son, through whom you bestow on this world all that is good, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us take a moment and acknowledge God's peace in our midst. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those that you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to the newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask in a special way this weekend that you take a moment and say a special prayer for those who have been very patient in the process of becoming Catholic, those who will be baptized and those who will be received into the church and those who experience the gifts of the Holy Spirit through confirmation. They have waited until this Sunday afternoon to experience that which was to take place at the Easter Vigil. And so please say an extra prayer that God may continue to bless their patience, but also give them this abundance of joy because for the first time they'll experience grace in a new way. Also, just a reminder to make sure that you are aware of the mass that will be transmitted to the parking lot. We're excited about this new adventure, an opportunity for everyone to stay in their cars in the safety of that environment and listen to what takes place here in church and then have Eucharist brought to them and then listen to the conclusion and the final blessing and prayers. It's going to be a great Sunday on the Feast of St. Anne. And so we look forward to that celebration as well. Check out the website and our parish app for information of how that is going to play out and how that works. Once again, and I don't say this often enough, I really want to thank you for constantly tuning in. I want to thank you for, for allowing us to be in your home as a parish. We're very grateful that all of God uh, and all the things that God is doing in, in our world, in our lives, in our faith, he's very patient. And we have to be patient with this process in ourselves as well. So may the Lord continue to bless you this summer. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May God send you forth with the blessings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.